Hi, welcome to Scaled Agile Framework Tutorial from Simply Learn. I am CMR Chandra MR, a certified ITL4 managing professional, Agile practitioner, PMP, Prince2, COVID-5, and DevOps. Today, as all of us know, Agile has become a well-known development methodology and the approach of choice for many development teams, especially those trying to create an environment of continuous delivery. When we think of Agile, we often think of high levels of collaboration and flexibility as well as iterative environment in which requirements evolve alongside the changing needs. So as a result, we also tend to conceptualize Agile as an approach that helps development teams across various industries deliver new features faster. But how do we get there? What does history of Agile entail? And how can knowing the history of Agile help us better understand the methodology and its positive impact on today's development world? Let us look at it. So now, historically, if you see, the waterfall approach was fine. It was delivering the required value. But it required teams to stick to the requirements and scope of work set out at the very beginning of the project and not make any changes or additions along the way as the project progresses. And following that fixed plan could prove trouble sometimes. Comparing to the scenarios which we had earlier versus today, the trouble is more, challenges more. So reason being waterfall methodology prioritized bringing a complete product to market, meaning it could take years before teams finish the project in hand. The scenarios of change, delay in responding to problem resolution, meeting changing market requirements were challenging which led to introduction of agile methodologies. So the various development methods like Scrum, Rapid Application Development, Extreme Programming, DSDM, Feature Driven Development and Pragmatic Program were introduced. So it all started early, I think in 2001 it was introduced. However, it all started in the spring of 2000 when a group of 17 software developers in Oregon to discuss how they could speed up development in order to bring new software to market faster. So they recognized two key opportunities that achieving this goal would make possible. So reducing the time to the benefits for those users in order to resolve the product market fit and development problems. Secondly, getting feedback from users quickly to confirm the usefulness of new software and continue to improve on it accordingly. So further, these group of 17 developers met again at a ski resort in Snowbird, Utah, US. So they created popularly known as Agile Manifesto, so which laid out four key values. So which says individuals and interactions or processes and tools, working software over comprehensive documentation, customer collaboration over contract negotiation, responding to change over following the plan are valued more. Now, further, between the time when it was introduced till today, Agile has become popular and adoption of that has increased, reason being the flexibility the Agile brought into the system. So several organizations across the world started using it. But what happened further? So Agile gave the result, but there was a challenge. So there were some issues that Agile faced to handle widespread usage. That is mainly whenever there is a scalability requirements. So what is that scalability challenge? It is quite obvious. How can an implementation of Agile for large and more complex project and how hard the process to scale Agile? So this was not clear. The very reason, the challenge which come across which the practitioners actually faced was one is lack of experience with agile methodologies, little understanding of frameworks, methods and how to implement them. Next, large scale coordination. So when I say specific project, a small project, it was easy implementation of agile and then going forward, all the frameworks, what I mentioned earlier, it was easy. But the moment you want to do a scaling to the bigger organization, the complex environment, 
the coordination collaboration dependency management between usually uh, distributed teams geographically distributed teams was challenging and thirdly having a clear understanding of what needs to be completed in the sprints and what the bigger picture is so fourth aligning the entire organization and managing committees so definitely organization required a alignment the products or services which are being produced by the project needs an alignment so the need of alignment was basically to ensure the organization gets the value out of whatever they have invested so fifth unrealistic expectation with respect to speed of delivery so unable to respond to this particular scenario so that organization can able to respond quickly so it was not happening so time to benefits i, I was mentioning about so generally earlier we used to speak about time to market but today it has been replaced by time to benefits how quickly the value of that particular product or services introduced to the market is realized by the users that is very important so the framework of uh, scaling agile there are various different frameworks so some of the most effective ways to scale agile uh, uh, would be large scale scrum which is called as ls scaled agile framework disciplined agile scrum at scale nexus scrum the spotify model so when i say less the large scale scrum it is a way of scaling agile and scaling scrum to large and big product development groups it has been used since 2005 in different software and hardware products in industries such as banking and telecom so when it comes to scaled agile framework so it is a set of organizations and workflow patterns intended to guide enterprise in scaling lean and agile practices so it is uh, made freely available by scaled agile inc which retains the copyrights and registered trademarks so the disciplined agile delivery which is also called as dad is a software development portion of the disciplined agile toolkit so dad enables teams to make simplified process decisions around incremental and iterative solution delivery so dad builds on many practices by uh, advocates of agile software development including scrum agile modeling lean software development and others so scrum at scale so scrum originally if you look at outline in the scrum guide is a framework for developing delivering and sustaining complex products by a single team so since its inception its usage was extended to the creation of products processes services and systems that require the efforts of multiple teams whereas scrum at scale was created to efficiently coordinate this new ecosystem of teams it achieves this goal through setting up a minimum viable bureaucracy via scale free architecture now coming to next one the nexus scrum so this consists of multiple cross functional scrum team working together to deliver a potentially releasable integrated uh, increment at least by the end of each print based on dependencies the teams may self organize and select the most appropriate members to do specific work so lastly the spotify model which is basically people driven autonomous framework for scaling agile while emphasizing the importance of culture and network this methodology uses squads tribes chapters guilds the foundation of which is squad which acts like scrum team so further let us look at the our focus area of this particular video which is basically what is scaled agile framework so scaled agile framework as i mentioned earlier consists of collection of principles best practices and processes that would enable large organization to adopt agile methodologies so it would help them deliver products and services of the highest quality faster so safe is best suited for complex projects that involves several large teams at the projects program and portfolio levels the current version of safe is version 5 which has seven core competencies based on which it can help organizations the large organization in specific so safe has certain core values which are basically alignment built in quality transparency and program execution 
so when i say alignment so i was mentioning about aligning with business uh, requirement business strategies so it is needed to keep pace with fast changing disruptive competitive forces and geographically distributed teams while empowered agile teams are good even great but the responsibility for strategy and alignment cannot rest with the combined opinions of the teams no matter how good they are instead alignment must rely on enterprises business objective so it also need to require to keep up with the change the competitions and then the dynamics across in the environment where organization is doing their business so next is built in quality so built in quality is basically to ensure that every element and every increment of the solutions reflect quality standards throughout the development life cycle so quality is not added later building quality is prerequisite of lean and flow without it the organization will likely operate with large batches of unverified unvalidated work which leads to the product or services which is not okay and also that would lead towards excessive rework which is not good and slower velocities which is not allow the organization to respond quickly to the dynamics of the market so third one is transparency so transparency which basically need to enable teams to rely on each other there should be trust which needs to be built so based on which high performance can happen so wherever the trust exists so when the business and development can confidently rely on each other to act with integrity particularly in times of responding quickly or to work out a solution for resolving something which is actually not allowing things to move forward so without trust no one can build high performance teams and programs so the confidence needed to make reasonable commitments is very very essential so fourth is program execution so safe focuses on working systems and business outcomes which mainly for example for teams to execute and continuously deliver value safe places an intense focus on working systems and business outcomes so this is because while many enterprises start the transformation with individual agile teams they often become frustrated uh, as even those uh, teams struggle to deliver most substantial amount of solution value reliability and efficiently so delivering solutions with better value reliability and efficiency effectiveness is very very essential and here we are speaking about ensuring the scalability to the bigger organization so program management plays a very important role so that requires lot of communication collaboration so without a better execution of that without handling it better things cannot go the way it is required so various competencies safe recommends so safe competencies involves team and technical agility agile product delivery enterprises solution delivery lean portfolio management organizational agility continuous learning culture and then lean agile leadership so when i say team and technical agility so agile teams are high performing and cross functional business solutions are built by business and technical teams delighting customer with high quality output so this requires an able team which understand agile frameworks which follows it which complies with it and also technically sound so agile product delivery which actually refers to the scenario where the customer is at the center of organization's product strategy so development is based on cadence and releases on demand exploring integrity deploying and innovating continuously then enterprise solution delivery so building big system with the help of lean coordinating and aligning the entire supply chain evolving the life system continuously requires to ensure the visibility of entire enterprises and providing solution accordingly lean portfolio management which basically focuses on aligning the strategy funding and execution optimizing operations across the portfolio decentralized decision making powered by lightweight governance then organizational agility a lean agile mindset is created across the enterprise it is very essential for example i am working in a project i have an attrition 
if hr does not understand my project dynamics and if they are not agile me as a project organization becoming agile will not help similarly the one the procurement similarly the processes so very essential for all the organization units to become agile so that business operations are able to complement contribute that speed or the change what is required so opportunities and threats are addressed quickly so risks are identified and addressed quickly so they are worked on it so risk management can become easier with the involvement of right stakeholders continuous learning culture so in this scenario everyone learns and grows together exploration and creativity are a very important part of organization where there should be an innovation creation execution maybe i think uh, i come across certain terms like intelligent risk taking so learning through failures failure should lead towards inquiry not towards blaming so this these are all the things which are more and more discussed when we want to make an organization a learning organization the continuous improvement of solutions services and processes is everyone's responsibility then lean agile leadership so by modeling desired behaviors inspiring others aligning words actions and mindset to lean agile principles and values lead change and guide others so this requires a lot of accountability and ensuring the correct information well informed individuals to take forward things now how does safe work so safe considering those competencies what we looked at the seven competencies so let us see what happens in each of the competencies how does safe work using these competencies so firstly let us look at team and technical agility which uh, basically uh, involves an agile team of 5 to 11 members which helps defining build test and deploy products so this is done by dividing the task into small easier to manage time boxed iterations right then uh, scrum team led by the scrum master and supported by product owner plan and then deliver the product in increments so further after delivery they have a retrospective to determine how the iterations went and how it can be improved this is incorporated into next iterations planning phase so the method used here could be scrum or kanban so both are popular the combination of this can be used so scrum basically helps in ensuring that things moves in iterations and everything is visible and delivered whereas kanban supports in terms of making it more visible and able to manage it better so agile product delivery so a large organization usually consists of several agile teams it led by their respective scrum masters so these teams together represent agile release trains also called as art so they usually involve 50 to 125 people so art are cross functional and involve everyone who understand customer needs and can help with building and delivering the solution required so art uses an agile delivery practices like the one used by the teams to deliver value to the customers so it uses time boxed iterations called program increments or pis which usually involves four to five iterations all the teams they get together to plan their work during pi planning events so they should work together they should have full visibility while doing it so three major components which are required when we do agile product delivery is release train engineer then project management and then system architect so release train engineer represents the coach of the art facilitated the pi planning process the project management provides the vision for the project and backlog of the tasks system architect provides architectural guidance for the process and then uh, the teams then make plans regarding what they would be able to deliver so the program board is also drawn up to determine dependencies between the teams which also goes through program iterations the pis as i mentioned earlier then after every iterations the art shows the integrated output to all teams through a system demo so after the pi is complete all team get together to retrospect event called the inspect and adapt events so further a continuous delivery pipeline is set up based on the art 
DevOps practices are also used to ensure values available on demand. I think the term DevOps is becoming more and more popular today, which actually providing that visibility, need for collaboration, need for cultural transformation. So which helps in terms of bringing that agility across the organization as well as learning organization. So one of the principles of DevOps itself says continuous learning. There should be continuous experimentation and learning, risk taking, intelligence risk taking. And also we come across speaking the concepts like same and army concept, like introducing failures into existing systems and learn what can fail and what is the solution for it. And that can help in terms of becoming more resilient and reliable system. So DevOps has become popular and uh, adoption of that, discussion on that is uh, become more common across the organizations. So next enterprise solution delivery. So enterprise solution delivery, let us look at a scenarios where a single art may not be able to deliver an appropriate solution. A solution train which coordinates multiple arts and suppliers would be able to provide solutions in large and complex scenarios. So meaning consideration of enterprise as a whole, seeing end-to-end -end organization, entire visibility. So basically what is that we are trying to achieve? So alignment we discussed about which requires the objective of organization because organization is investing. So whatever we do at various different levels should complement to each other rather than contradicting. So that complementing thought or complementing visibility can happen only when someone has a bigger visibility. Enterprise world wide outlook. Then uh, the three major components that are required in the enterprise solution delivery would be solution management, solutions architect and solution train engineer. The solution management holds content authority over what needs to be built. Solution architect handles the architecture across the arts. Solution train engineer enables coaching and facilitating of solutions train events. So next is lean portfolio management. So lean portfolio management provides ways of creating and combining strategic themes and portfolio vision. This enables solution development to be aligned with enterprise strategy. So the moment I say lean, firstly we should keep in mind that it's about creating value to the stakeholders. That is first thing. Second thing is elimination of waste. Now when I link this to strategy, when I link to, towards the organization's directions, what it sets, and while going in the directions, I should ensure no defects are actually moved downstream or are eliminated when it goes to downstream. So customer should see the value which is very important and identification of all the contributions of waste has to be done and eliminated. So this ensures there is a value in organization's value stream which also ensures that these value streams remain funded. So funding plays a very important role. So next is organizational agility. So when I say organizational agility, it should ensure the organizations, various business units in the organizations should be with that dynamics of agility which organization is going to, which organization is moving to. As I mentioned earlier, if, if you have a project where you have, you have adopted agile methodologies, it's quite obvious for your pace, for your flexibility, for your speed, other business units which are working with you to support you should also complement to that. They cannot become slower. They cannot have their own pace of uh, doing things. Like in your project, you have a procurement, you have a recruitment, you have some claims to be cleared from HR. Maybe you are dependent on certain tools and environments. Now if these are not agile, if these are not responding in the same flexibility or same speed what the agile project team requires, then obviously things will not flow further. Now when I say agile, obviously we introduce products or services quickly to the environment. Now someone needs to manage, we have operations. Now can operations manage the products or services which they are not aware of? Now even there the agility is required. As I keep introducing the new products or services to the environment, operations should also be well informed and educated about it so that they can monitor and manage them effectively and efficiently. If they fail, I think users will not have a good experience. Your product or services may have a great features functionalities. But however, if whenever there is a query about that product features or functionality, whenever there is an issue, the incident, 
which user actually calls the first point of contact for any users would be the operations the moment operations fails to respond with the right clarifications or right resolution quickly then obviously user experience will result in not a good way i think customer satisfaction or customer delight will be at stake so even operation should become a jail so rest of the business units which are supporting like funding we spoke about if funding is not done in an agile way obviously the things cannot move smoother or easier so everything across organization should become agile organizational agility has to be ensured so enabling portfolio with strategic agility making change in the direction depending on the scenario then encouraging the growth of lean thinking people and agile teams so people should be working towards ensuring creating value always every task every transactions what they do should be enabled through it so they should also know whatever we are doing how this particular task or the work or the results what i am creating results in value addition or value creation to the organization does it really align to the organization's requirement is it fulfilling maybe customer as a stakeholder or my own organization the business unit which is actually investing on this project so in that context or in that perspective everyone should be aware of that alignment the directions the vision then uh, focusing on value and helping with organizing and reorganizing building an environment for the flow of value across the organization so everyone should realize value so value is what value can be uh, defined in the perspective of every individual's background and every individual's requirement because it's a perceived one so there may be real thing what we have created but perception is different so the perceived versus what is actually created should be as closer as possible so zero deviation is expectation but difficult but however it should have a tendency towards it it should actually be very near to that perceived reality but two things involved one is that i create a features and functionality for my product or services which fulfills customer requirements customer may not know not well educated not aware of it and don't know how to realize that value how to know how these features and functionalities can be used so now if you educate that customer the user how to use it what are the values it can create and do some uh, exercise in terms of educating training coaching customer can visualize it and just understand that that is one possibility second thing is customer is very matured and our product does not have features and functionality required so these are the two scenarios which require lot of interactions and engagement so that increasing in terms of usage of product and services and realizing those values so this has to be encouraged more and more so further continuous learning culture so when we say learning it's quite obvious organization should keep maturing individuals in organization should keep maturing in terms of capabilities in terms of ability to do new things innovate the knowledge the capability skills competencies so that can be possible only through learning so learning should be continuous so this ensures an atmosphere of innovation and constant improvement until organizations becomes a learning organization so meaning at every level each individuals each professionals each engineers each executives invest their time in learning they learn through what they are doing they go through formal training they bring in that formal training learning into the actions here for they they learn so continuous experimentation creating an hypothesis working on those hypothesis aligning that to the requirement of organization and seeing how is it complementing to the organization's requirement so seeing through this are very essential so the organization which is having the culture of continuous learning can sustain and grow continually there is no question of looking back if organization has a scenario of not learning they will fade away they may fail to exist so it is very much required to understand the market dynamics continuous learning there capabilities and skill enhancement continuous learning here innovations and making things better continuous learning so continuous learning helps organization to be there in the industry and continue with the competition so next is lean agile leadership so it's quite obvious leadership plays very important role it's about guiding it's about owning it's about showing directions it's about ensuring everyone does the task everybody is motivated so the leaders must embody teach and exhibit 
lean and agile principles and values so firstly they should understand what it is they should be aware of it they should have an exposure to it they should have full awareness of it as i was learning about continuous learning culture in the previous point so leaders should do that first so only then i think the followers will actually have learning adopted to themselves and things move smoother and better and this should happen across the organization so by doing this it is quite obvious organization can become better agile organization is complemented to achieve the objectives and goals what they wanted to accomplish and uh, there is a safe configurations which one needs to ensure which involves essential safe raj solution safe portfolio safe and full safe so when i say essential safe it acts as the foundation for all safe configurations and is the easiest starting point for implementation so large solution safe it is used for building large and complex solutions whereas portfolio safe provides principles and strategies that can enable business agility in an enterprise so when i say portfolio it should be understood as portfolio of an organization as a whole the service portfolio the product portfolio the business portfolio so understanding of that and complementing to that is very essential so full safe is a comprehensive configuration that includes all competencies and ensures business agility so advantages and disadvantages of safe so advantages involves enabling decentralized decision making it eases collaboration across cross functional teams it ensures decisions are made with strategic objectives in mind so disadvantages include additional layers of oversight which makes it resemble the waterfall approach the top down approach can limit understanding of the software life cycle and cause bad planning so visibility providing that visibility is very essential then larger planning cycles and roles that are fixed in development cycles that's it i hope this tutorial helped you to understand the safe framework better and this is just a glimpse of it for more details i think simple and would help you so be in touch with us and continue learning until the next video bye for now take care Hi there. If you like this video, subscribe to the Simply Learn YouTube channel and click here to watch similar videos. To nerd up and get certified, click here.